OK, Keir, so uh, at the start of the season, the thought of a 4-1 win against uh, Malvern was just unheard of. They're certainly one of the best teams I've seen in the Hellenic League during our time in, in this division. Um, but we got 4-1 today. Uh, does that certainly show how far we've come as a team? Definitely. Um, I think if you look across the course of this season, we've got better and better and better as the, the season's gone on. Um, the side that we had down at Malvern at the start of the season, um, is completely different to what we've got now. Um, five or six new signings across the season, which only happens um, from continued success from the current playing squad. So no disrespect to the boys that were with us at the start of the season, but with any non-league football side, you have to keep progressing. And um, I feel like we have done, um, you only have to look around the, the ground today. God knows how many people were here, but it's just filled with um, young lads asking for autographs in, in, in photographs for, with, with the players and things like that. It's great. And that's what non-league football clubs need is that, you know, the, the heart and soul of, of everything that we're, we're trying to do as a community club. Um, you know, 11 mascots again walking out with the players. Um, it, it, it's brilliant and I, and I love everything about it. Um, the, uh, the fans today were, were superb, really good support throughout the game, nice and noisy. Um, and it felt like, you know, like a, like a proper football club. And you think to this time last year, you know, we, we were coming to the end of the season, probably we had 50, 60 people watching. Now we've got nearly 350, 400 for, for, for home games. Um, that only happens with the success that we've had this year. Um, we've, been, we've been magnificent across the year. And I'd literally just had the conversation with all the boys in the changing rooms. Um, what we've finished the season with, obviously today and, and, and Monday night against Roman Glass, just want to try and keep as many of the lads together as we possibly can because I think if you have this side and this squad together for a full season you know it, it's limitless for us um, because what we've got now and what we've built and what we've created and, and turned into is really 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 good um, we're on the verge of greatness this year you know just short of a trip to Wembley losing on penalties to Ascot on the 1st of April since then we've had eight games and it's the 22nd today and we've won seven of them and drawn one that is unbelievable for to put that heartache to bed quickly and go and respond with that um so huge huge credit to the attitude and commitment um and the mentality of the playing squad and um everyone everyone associated with the football club um and today was really enjoyable we were absolutely fantastic and i know that their gaffers won't mind me saying this but on another day, that could have been six, seven, or possibly even more because we were absolutely ruthless today um, at, at both ends. They've got a deflected goal, um, but we had so many opportunities first half and, and second half to, to really, really um, put them to the sword, and we didn't. 4-1 um, will read like a, a really big result, but it, it could have been more. And that's no disrespect to Malvern. Obviously, maybe one eye on what they're going to be doing with if it's playoffs or automatic points per game promotion. Um, but they obviously needed to come here and get a result because to improve their points per game so they don't have to go into a playoff. Um, they obviously won't know that in, until Wednesday. And now you think if we did maybe have the, the adequate rest that, um, that we probably deserved with um, the fixture rearrangement, that you know we, we could have taken this right to the wire. But to have eight games in 20 days and to win seven and drawn one and just shows what a group we've got at the moment we've lost three games all season home record's been outstanding um and the south bank's becoming a real fortress and i think the the guys at the football club at the moment the directors included all the people like yourselves volunteers that give up all their time and including the the, the coaching staff and all the players this year are starting to put caution on the map and you know it, it, it's getting now more than just a little bit of noise it, it, it could be it could be something magical and something special moving forward so i hope everyone um, enjoyed today and just seen what what can happen when you know there's there's faith put in um, myself and um, the management staff to, to, to create a playing squad that can go and really challenge for stuff and you think this is my full second season as manager of Corsham what we've done in that short amount of time as, as, a, as a group is phenomenal so um, if, if next season we can kick on and actually win something and not just get to a final like last year or get to a Zaz semi-final or come third and, and not quite actually win anything because, you know, we get judged on what we win. If next year we, c we can add a, a trophy or a promotion to, to what we've created, then 
then brilliant. But I told you when I first came here that it would be a four or five year plan. I feel like we're ahead of schedule for where where we are. Um, and now I think we're we're really close to competing to to getting up into Southern League so hopefully next season everyone stays together everyone appreciates what I do and the management staff and people around the football club do for them on on match days and, and throughout the week and, and want to be part of it next season and I know there's going to be some ex more exciting news coming out of the football club in the next couple of weeks about um, players that have already committed uh, for next year and I think that's the, 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 the base start for getting planned and ready for next year. You've mentioned the Southern League. It's it's um, it's obvious that that's that's our aim. Um, do you think that we need to do more, like with, within the squad, to, to make ourselves Southern League ready, or do you think if you can keep everyone together, that what we've got is is more than enough to to be in the Southern League? If I can keep every single one of that playing squad um, fit and healthy and interested for next year, plus obviously Smeds and Keatsy, um, who are, are out injured now, um, longer longer term. If I can keep that. 18 and then maybe add a couple of young lads um, that you know want a chance at a, a higher level 19 20 playing squad then I think we're definitely ready to, to compete for seven league you think that when I first had the interview we were stood in this in, in the same stand you know and we were just talking about winning division one now we've got promotion since then and then we competed um, last season got to a cup final and this season we're so so close to it being absolutely near perfect but with every failure, you know, you have to make sure you learn a lesson and progress from it. And I feel since, obviously, that's happened, the run we've gone on has been brilliant. And, you know, we've got one more game to go, but let's say that we um, we finish off with an, another big result on Monday night. What what more could you have done um, a, a, across the course of the season to, to finish third and obviously so close to promotion and then run a Vaz semi-final cup run alongside that to be one penalty kick away from from Wembley and not might make it you know you, you've got to take the positives from that and we've we've taken so many lessons across the season and and dealt with the hard the hard yards and the heartache of losing the semi-final but it feels like an eternity this season it really does one of the longest seasons I've been involved with but I've enjoyed every second of it and if I didn't enjoy it and you know we weren't ambitious and we weren't progressing on then we wouldn't do it none of us would but I feel like caution now is into that sleeping giant mode now that everyone's starting to notice a little bit crowd numbers are up um, it got such good interaction with the town now um, the community side of it's massive you know everything you do on social media to, to, to boost the popularity of the football club it, it, it's getting recognised now and it won't be hard for me to, to go out and, and sign good quality established non-league players now whereas before you know we had to, to, to almost like work miracles to get a couple in whereas now the, the, the squad in the, the club is established so I can add a couple of um, extra boys into the mix for next year and keep what we got you know that, that, that could be fire ready for next year and um, today's man of the match was, was Nikel. He's certainly been our, our star man as the season's progressed. Is he going to be one of those players that you're going to be absolutely uh, confident can play for us next season? Yeah, um, I already had that conversation. I've got a good relationship with, with Nick. He's played with me at Melksham m many years ago and I was desperate to bring him here. And then he's gone had a 30-goal season. Um, I think oh, there was a stat jumping around before kickoff that if he scored one today, he would be the highest scoring Corsham player since 1998 which goes to show the faith that we put in him um, to, to, to go on and, and, and be the spearhead for, for our new look Corsham side and he's obviously repaid the faith shown in him by the football club um, so yeah if we can have him for a full season and I can get my hands on him again for a pre-season to make sure he's fit, he's fit and fire and then who knows what's going to be in store for him next year but not only is what he does on the football pitch but in the change room he's massive for us um, he, he's such a leader on and off the pitch and, and, and he's a massive presence and I'm delighted to have him at the football club head and shoulders man of the match today but that front three of of Kane Dan Demkiff in, in Nikau is unbelievable like today they caused so many problems and again it could have been six or seven if we were a bit more clinical um, but that is the best team performance we've had for, for a long time um, it was almost near perfect apart from their deflected goal limited them to to hardly any chances midfield three were, were fantastic um, Nath's been an absolute monster this year we've added Hobbsy and Ruz mid-season to, to, to the mix who good experienced players to have around Ruz is obviously captain Hungerford for many a season and I'll, I'll do everything I can to try and keep him involved for next year back four solid Brandon's come in and out this year proper proper club man 
Obviously, Swanee Coops and Alex was superb today. Jeppo was really, really steady again. He's, you know, gone and got, I think, got 20 clean sheets this year, which has been brilliant. So, with those boys and all the the lads that have been in and out, and the ones that have been been injured as well, it, it, it's just a really, really good feel around the place. And I'll just do everything I can, have a meeting with the directors, and and, and get ready and try and get us prepared for next year now.